would rather live in truth. They were not there by chance, Kratos! The god of war has been plotting for years. In time you will forget. If this is what keeps you in service to Lord Ares, then this is what you shall have. Never! You think you want truth? Lord Ares still holds your bar. But truth will only bring you pain! For you to be free, I must die by your hand. Give me an honorable death. Painful truth rushed back to Kratos' mind. The truth of the murder he committed. The slaughter of his wife and child. Tortured by the truth of his past. Kratos left the only home he'd ever known. And set out to undo all that he had wanted. Now known as the ghost of Sparta, had pledged himself as a champion to the gods of Olympus. In return, he hoped only to rid himself of the nightmares that haunted him for far too long. You must find Helios and return him to the sky. Where has Atlas taken him? Calliope! Father? Persephone! I demand to see my daughter! Once the pillar is destroyed, the world will revert into chaos. Elysium falls to Kratos. She will perish. To stay with his daughter meant the end of the world and the end of her. Perhaps you believe the Olympians will help you. He has again served us well, Athena. I will serve them! And they will keep their promise to free me from my past! What good? The promise of an Olympian. He'll live. They must. of Olympus have abandoned me. Now there is no hope. And Kratos cast himself from the highest mountain in all of Greece. After ten years of suffering, ten years of endless nightmares, it would finally come to an end. Death would be his escape from madness. But it had not always been this way. Kratos had once been a champion of the gods. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play God of War, the 2005 original by Santa Monica Studios. Yeah, I'm really excited that we're finally at the original God of War at last, after all this time. After starting with two spin-off titles, here we are, the actual original first game that started this entire franchise. Fantastic game, I love it so much. Uh, yeah, let's rattle off a little bit of um, initial information about God of War. Uh, God of War made by Santa Monica Studios. This is Santa Monica Studios' second game created by the internal development team. Um, their first game was a 2001 kart racer, I think, by the name of Kinetica. I never played it, never even heard about it, never even heard about it until, you know, this commentary, but apparently they did that before God of War. But after Kinetica, they made this, and then basically they stuck with God of War uh, forever. This is a studio that is good at this IP is good at making this IP feel fresh and, and cool and awesome and 
they've stuck to it, you know? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, except, you know, when you have to. And they did with the, um, with the Norse God of War stuff, knowing that they had exhausted how much they could do with, with this gameplay style that we're seeing right now in the original God of War and all the God of Wars we're going to be playing uh, for the foreseeable future on this channel. Um, yeah, this is a studio that really knows what they're doing with this franchise. Oh, here's our first boss, Hydra Head number one. Um, very simple boss. You can block every single attack he does. Just The only thing he's going to do is just chomp at you every now and again. Um, just block it when he does that and just hit him anytime he's not doing that and you know easy enough anyway Santa Monica Studio Connecticut first then God of War and they stuck with God of War basically forever because they became the God of War studio and were able to do it really well um, this original God of War title came out in 2005 it was for the PlayStation 2 directed by David Jaffe, who, of course, we now know as the guy that uh, doesn't like Metroid Dread. He even has a room in Metroid Dread named after him, so that's great. I mean, ugh. whatever, that's a whole separate situation. Anyway, he made this game. This game's pretty good. We're going to talk about how weird it is that he doesn't like some of the, you know, design decisions of Metroid Dread when he himself has made this game, which has some very, very, very crazily hidden shit all over the place, so we'll we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll get into it. Point is, we've beaten the Hydra. It's time to initiate our first QTE. The first QTE of the God of War franchise is this fun little <laughs> beat up of the Hydra head. It's really cool. This is a very, very successful tutorial cold open area for the God of War, for the God of War franchise. Um, it introduces basically everything. You know, it introduces the basic combat, epic bosses, um, the annoying things like this, this, um, <laughs> this balance mini game here that you have to do. Um, there's a joke in Chains of Olympus about how there's only one balance mini game in the entire in the entire thing because of just how Stay not away. well received it was. Oh, here me. we go. I know who you are, Spartan. I know what you've done. I would rather die than be saved by you. You, the ghosts of Sparta, stay away! Stay away from me! Introducing the fact that there are, you know, NPCs you can actually talk to, introducing chests. This opening area introduces basically everything about the game, and it's really, really good, really successful, really tells you everything you're going to be doing. Obviously, in difficulty level, that's more manageable compared to the rest of the game, but it really does a great job of teaching you everything that, that you need to know. Um, we are playing on the highest difficulty, which is God Mode, I believe. In the original God of War, the highest difficulty is called God Mode, but I am just going to confirm that very quickly while Kratos goes ahead and um, opens up some, some secret blank white chests. There are three types of chests in the game. There's chests that can heal your magic and or health. Um, there's chests that contain purely red orbs, and then there are these white chests. These white chests can contain more additional red orbs, or green orbs, or magic orbs, or they can also contain the game's collectibles. In this game, in this case, it's uh, Gorgon's Eyes and Phoenix Feathers. We'll be getting into that later as we actually collect our first Gorgon Eye and Phoenix Feather. Um, the Phoenix Feather won't come until a little bit later, but the first Gorgon's Eye will be able to get uh, relatively soon in this in this whole opening area. But yeah, white chests, they're very plentiful in this game. Um, as compared to the later God of Wars, where the white chests where it seems like the um, the designers really nailed down to the white chests, the blank white chests are going to really just have the collectibles. In this game, it's a lot more um, loosey-goosey with that, so there's a lot more blank white chests, but because of that, there's a lot more blank white chests that exclusively only hold red orbs, orbs of some kind. Um, I don't know why exactly they made that decision, but again, this is very... Oh, here we go, second Hydra Head. Um, but again, this is the very first God of War game, so they didn't really nail down what all the chests mean, and, you know, the, the rarity and the scarcity of the white chests. I mean, most God of War games contain 50-something blank white chests that either have red orbs or most likely collectibles. In this game, there's freaking 91 of them, so, you know, we'll be, we'll be talking about the white chests a lot more. Um, in the meantime, though, second Hydra Head. This Hydra Head has a few attacks. Slam down. Um, I don't know if you can actually block it or not. I don't try to block it. I just try to 
to get out of the way because it's very easy. It's very easily telegraphed very easy to get away from. When the Hydra grabs you like this, you want the Hydra head to grab you like the way it just grabbed us right now because you can get into a mash circle QTE, which as you saw, it does a ton of damage. It's the fastest way to kill this Hydra compared to the first Hydra head where you only have to bring it down to half health before you can kill it. This second Hydra head, you do have to bring down the entire health bar to actually kill it. Um, so you want it to actually grab you like this and do the mash circle QTE because you're going to be able to do a ton of damage to this Hydra head as you can see right now. That's a ton of damage right there. You want the Hydra Head to do that to you as often as possible. Try to position yourself in front of the Hydra Head. It, got, it has the big greatest chance of actually doing that to you, as you can see. Aside from that, it has the Slam Down attack, which, again, very easily telegraphed. I don't try to block it, I just try to dodge it. And then he also just try, does a, a big, um, big area circle attack, where he just swings his head in a wide arc along the ground. You can block that, and that's it. It only has three attacks. One of them is a very easy QTE that, you know, very difficult to, to mess up. And we're actually gonna kill it right now because this QTE is gonna do enough damage to it that, you know, adios Hydra Head. And there it is. Wonderful. Anyway, very successful tutorial area. It really teaches you everything that you need to know about this game. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is a good game. I really like it a lot. Um, Despite the fact that the game director is a very somewhat divisive figure in the video game in the uh, video game industry, the game itself, you know, the game speaks for itself. I really like it a lot. God of War is great. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be doing this whole Let's Play series in the first in the first place. So obviously, it's got to be pretty good. <laughs> More balance beam puzzles. Uh, in this case, you want to go right first because there is a free, a secret red orb chest here. Again, tutorial area teaching you everything you need to know about the game, including the fact that there's going to be secrets, including the fact that you can almost fall off balance beams that you have a chance to get back up when you do. Yeah, it's good stuff. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's really, really effective tutorial area. Not representative of what the difficulty of the whole game is going to be, but very good at teaching you everything that's going to happen. Cutscene time. It's, it's you! The visions, they were real! The gods came to me, told me their champion would come and rescue us from the Hydra. But you're too late! We're pinned down! Oh, these creatures, they came from nowhere. The ships are all destroyed. All hope is lost, Spartan. Even for you... The game came out to critical acclaim, launching a franchise and allowing a studio to basically become excellent at one thing. This, by the way, is a, a save point. This is the only save point we're actually going to see um, fully, just because I don't want to show these want to keep the game moving as efficiently as possible. Um, so this is the only one we're going to see. Very simple. Here we have a little puzzle. Our first of the many puzzles we're going to have in this game, also teaching us how to move blocks, and also teaching us that God of War isn't just a combat game, it's also going to be a heavy puzzle game. Um, in this case, we need to get this block all the way to the other side so we can actually climb up the, uh, the mast and uh, get to where the archers are. Be careful because the archers can hit the box, and if they hit it, I think, three times potentially, uh, the box is destroyed, and you have to go all the way back to where the box was originally because a new one will spawn in and you'll have to push it over here again. I got very lucky and actually managed to get the box through on my first try, but believe me, not... Um, a very dickish puzzle to open the game up with, but it's one that teaches you that puzzles are going to be a thing. Some of them are going to be puzzles you have to do under duress, because some of them are going to be puzzles you have to do while enemies are trying to kill you. Not all of the puzzles are going to be like that, there's going to be plenty of puzzles where you'll have an entire room to yourself and you'll be able to just go through and just calmly figure out what you're supposed to do, but a lot of the time it's going to be like that. Oh. Oh.
Oh, that's not something you want to hear. But it does give us our next objective. Aside from just killing the Hydra, we are going to have to get a key to save the women that are inside the captain's quarters. Uh, this is the worst part of God of War. Um, the original God of War is very... Some areas of the original God of War shows just how unpolished the franchise is at this point compared to how it's going to be in the future. Um, combat while climbing is the worst part of this game. I hate doing combat while climbing or combat while on a, uh, on a rope. It's awful. And I'm almost going to die here because it's just, it's really, really bad and really, really difficult to to not get hurt here. And the highest difficulty, these enemies do so much fucking damage to you that just a few hits and you're already almost dead. It's... Oh, and then you have that heart pounding, that heart pumping uh, sound effect that's playing when you have low health. It's very, very anxiety inducing to hear that shit. <laughs> I mean, look at that. I have literally no health. I'm so low on health that there are some points where you can't actually see it. I'm going to, I'm going to get hurt one more time, and I think you're literally not going to be able to see the green anymore, because that's how low health I am. Um, Jesus. Not in this particular case. It's not going to happen in this particular case, but there's another climbing section where that's going to happen, where my health is going to be so low you're not going to see the green anymore. God. You can balance beam back here, by the way, for an extra red orb chest. The red orb chests in the beginning have so few red orbs that, you know, it's... You're not going to get enough to, to upgrade anything really early on, because you're just going to get so few red orbs. But keep collecting them, because if, we, um, if we're persistent enough with collecting them, then we will, be, we will be able to get our first upgrade before we get into our first major combat encounter in the second video, which is, which is very good, because we want to power up our shit as soon as possible. Uh, you may be noticing in the red orbs that we don't have a counter for how many red orbs we have. We just have this, uh, this bar that keeps filling up with the, the one and the two and stuff. We also got our first Gorgon's Eye, which collecting six of them is going to give us our, uh, our first health upgrade. And I'll talk more about the red orb stuff after this cutscene, but now we're going to get our very first magic power. Again, very effective tutorial that teaches you and does everything for you in a very short vertical slice. Here we go. Lord Poseidon, Kratos, before you reach Athens, there is a task you must complete. This beast, this Hydra, it has terrorized my seas for far too long. Your skills are admirable, but you will need assistance. You will need the power of the gods. Take this weapon, Kratos. Take this power and use it to defeat your enemies. Yeah, very, very effective vertical slice. We have our first magic power. It's awesome. In the name of Olympus. Poseidon is telling us to go forth in the name of Olympus. They're all going to tell us to do that. Um, before we go forth, though, we have we have a chance to uh, test out our magic power here by uh, killing enemies with it. Again, very effective, very excellent vertical slice. Talking about the red orbs now, you're noticing now, instead of actually having a counter of how many red orbs we have, we have this uh, bar system that doesn't tell us how many red orbs we have, it just tells us how many bars of how many full red bars of red orbs that we have, which I find to be less effective than than how later God of War games do it. Again, this is the very first game, so somewhat unpolished in terms of how everything works. Too many white chests, red orbs is kind of weird. Uh, we're using R2 to open chests and stuff instead of just uh, instead of just one of the face buttons. It's very, you know, some unpolished portions of this game, but here we go. Back! Back! Get them away from the shit! Why won't they die? It's the giant one! He keeps healing the others! <laughs> no, I... Never get out of here! Doom! We're doomed! We're all... Silent. Save me! 
some parts are unpolished, but it all comes together to create a very, very effective title and a very, very effective showcase for what Santa Monica Studio is capable of and why it's going to be such a premier studio moving forward. Um, it's really impressive. Anyway, moving on, we have the boss of the AGNC. It is the Hydra, the true main boss Hydra head, and two more little subservient Hydra heads here. Uh, the subservient Hydra heads have to be taken care of first, or you won't be able to climb up to the mast to fight the boss head. So, yeah, take care of the uh, the two subservient heads first. I like l allowing myself to be pushed back and forth by the two Hydra heads, because I like lowering their health bars down at, at about the same time, so... I don't fight it whenever the Hydras use their, their breath to just suck me back towards one of them. Once you're sucked towards a Hydra, they're going to do a couple of things. They're just, they're just going to try to bite you, which is very easily blocked. It's, there's nothing to it. And they're sometimes going to do that um, head attack where they spin around and they spin around in a, uh, in a small area. You can block that too. You can block everything they do, is what I'm basically trying to say. They're not going to do the QTE that the second Hydra head did, the one where it tries to grab you and tries to eat you and you have to mash circle really really fast they're not going to do that anymore but they're just going to keep doing this it's very very easy to deal with and again just allow yourself to be pushed back and forth to try and lower the hydra head's health at you know about the same pace that way once you kill one of the hydra heads the other one won't be at nearly full health and you won't have to worry too much about how um how long it's going to take you to actually kill the other one um yeah very easy boss, but a very, very effective vertical slice of how, how how this game works. This is, again, I'm saying this so much because it really is just... It's such an effective, excellent intro, and it inspires what what, what um, God of War is going to be moving forward with these epic, amazing cold opens that um, sometimes tie into the main story, sometimes they don't. This one in particular doesn't. You don't have to get the Hydra heads all the way down to, um, to zero health, by the way. You just gotta get them down to about... Um, about to a fourth of the health that they have left, and then, and then you get the the opportunity to do a um, a special takedown thing where you lower that uh, hook onto their necks and kill them and pin them in place. Because obviously, if you don't do that, the Hydra heads must come back. Because it's a Hydra, you kill, cut off one head, two more takes its place. Thank you for teaching me that, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Anyway. Again, very effective vertical slice. I love this game and this opening so much. Um, down goes the uh, the second Hydra head. This is a great game, effective vertical slice. Uh, we're going to get into the parts of this game that I don't like as much, because compared to other God of Wars, and we'll talk about this more in the second episode, it's a pretty... There's a, there's a lot more slow parts in this one compared to um, compared to other God of Wars, but obviously this, this is not a slow part of the game at all. This is a very, very action-packed, fast-paced opening. So let's talk about the boss head here. Um, boss head's going to do one of two things. It's going to try to bite you in the um, in the side of the mast that you're on, so just quickly run or roll to the other side of the mast that you're not on so that the Hydra head can't actually do big damage to you. Yeah, so just try to lure it over to one side, run over to the other one. The Hydra Head's also going to scream a lot. It can potentially push you off the mast, but if it does that, it's not a big deal. It's not going to actually kill you or do any damage to you. It's just kind of annoying because you have to climb all the way back up. What you want the Hydra Head to do is this, where it bites down the middle, and then you do a five-hit combo, and then Poseidon's Rage. So, five-hit combo, Poseidon's Rage, five-hit combo, Poseidon's Rage. If you're fast enough and close enough, then you can actually... Um, do in basically kind of an infinite combo situation here. Four, five, Poseidon's Rage. One, two, three, four, five, Poseidon's Rage. And you can just keep doing that until you get the Hydra Head to about um, a little over half health, so that way you can do a QTE where you try to mash him into the mass. So the head, so the secret to the Hydra Head is getting it to attack straight down the middle with a bite. Scream is fine, but it's just there for, for show. Scream doesn't do any damage. Just have it bite down the middle, and then one, two, three, four, five, Poseidon's Rage. One, two, three, four, five, Poseidon's Rage. And then, you know, before you know it, you already have done enough damage to um, activate the next QTE, which again, it's just another mash circle. You're trying to mash his head into the mask because you're trying to destroy the mask so you can stab its head through it. Very effective. Um, very good, um, very good strategy. Again, just having it smack, smack down right in the middle with a big bite, and at that point doing one, two, three, four, five hits, and then Poseidon's Rage. So here we go again. One, two, oh, messed it up. And I got hit again. 
highest difficulty, so it's going to do a lot of damage. It's not going to be a one-hit kill, but it is going to be very, very close, so you don't want to... You don't want to screw up too much here. Thankfully, as a, a first boss, however, you are going to be getting plenty of orbs back. Basically, for every certain amount of damage you do, you get a whole bunch of red and blue orbs. Uh, sorry, red and blue. Green and blue orbs back to uh, replenish your health and your magic. Because, again, even though this is a bit of a higher difficulty, it is still the first boss, so they don't want to make it too difficult for you. So, again, one, two, three, four, five. Poseidon's Rage, five hits, Poseidon's Rage, try to link it as, so it doesn't try to get away from you. You can basically stun lock it by doing that. So here we go again. It's gonna scream again. And now we're going to implement our strategy once more. Once it stops screaming, I, it screams so much for me in this first fight. I'm wasting a lot of time doing that. But here we go. Big bite down the middle. Five hits, Poseidon's Rage, stun lock it. Five more hits, Poseidon's Rage, Stun Lock it. And if you're lucky, you can do that like uh, two or three times before it actually gets out of it, doing big damage the entire time. So that's that's how you deal with the boss head. Very, very simple. It can't one-hit kill you, so don't worry about it too much. Very annoying when you can't actually, actually Stun Lock it, because you have to waste more time waiting for it to, to do the big bite, because... It doesn't like to do it that much. You really have to just really have to just try to bait it into into doing it by standing in the in the front middle of the mast. Here we go. Two, three, four, five, Poseidon's Rage. One, two, three, four, five, Poseidon's Rage. There we go. Now it's time for our next QTE. The Hydra Head is done. And this one won't be a mash circle, this one will be a full QTE here. Complete this, and you will have beaten your first boss of the original God of War. Well done, us. Now we have to complete our second objective, which is getting the, you know, the key to the captain's quarters. And here we go. Let's do that right now. Thank you. Thank the gods you came back for me. I didn't come back for you. No! Ruthless. But that's where Kratos is at this point. Ten years of service to the gods. Fucked over at every turn. Oh, man. Well. Whatever. We completed our objective for the day. Kept our mind and our body busy so we don't think about, uh, you know, other stuff. Other more unfortunate stuff going on in his life can open up this white chest and we get our second Gorgon's Eye. Again, I said it before really briefly, but uh, in this game, six Gorgon's Eyes will give us our or will give us a health upgrade. And we're about to reach the end of the video here, so I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to say again that this was an extremely effective vertical slice. We have a little bit more combat before we reach the end, but basically once we get to the, uh, to the boat captain's quarters, we're at the end of the video. Um, just a small bit more combat here, just... You know, so the game doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to bore you or waste your time. Very easy combat. Uh, when it comes to fighting regular enemies, we'll talk more about uh, how to deal with them in the second episode because this first episode isn't really a great re representation of how to fight basic enemies because these basic enemies are exceptionally weak even in the highest difficulty. They are, un they are namely unarmored, which means that we don't have to employ other strategies that we will have to be using for the majority of the game. We can just grab them and throw them or just hit them or do whatever the fuck we want to them to beat them. Um, that's not going to be the case moving forward, but in this first in this first episode, uh, you know, there's not much 
two fighting enemies. We're going to talk more about uh, what the game is really going to be like in the actual difficulty of the game uh, next time. Uh, for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next video. Slaughtered like animals, the victims lay before him, a reminder of his own past, a past he could never escape. <laughs> his only solace was the sea, endlessly sailing from one harbor to the next in service to the gods of Olympus. All his hopes rested with them. For no matter how much wine he consumed or how many women he took to his bed, nothing on earth could rid him of the horrors that plagued his mind. <laughs> Athena! Ten years, Athena. I have faithfully served the gods for ten years. When will you relieve me of these nightmares? We request one final task of you, Kratos. Your greatest challenge awaits in Athens, where even now my brother Ares lays siege as we speak. Athens is on the verge of destruction. It is the will of Ares, my great city fall. Zeus has forbidden the gods from waging war on each other. That is why it must be you, Kratos. Only a mortal trained by a god has a chance at defeating Ares. And if I am able to do this, to kill a god, then the visions, they will end? Complete this final task, and the past that consumes you will be forgiven. Have faith, Kratos. The gods do not forget those who come to their aid. Leaving the rotting carcass of the Hydra behind, Kratos set sail once more. His greatest challenge and freedom from his growing madness lay before him in the ancient city of Athens.